Thank you, Charles. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. David Chandler. My name is David Chandler. I'm here representing the newly formed Scientists for 9-11 Truth. The scientific evidence is overwhelming that the three skyscrapers in the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers and Building 7, were demolished with the aid of explosives on September 11, 2001. Here are some of the key pieces of evidence. Number one. Two studies of the downward motion of the North Tower, one by Graham McQueen and Tony Zambodi, the other by myself, both available at the Journal of 9-11 Studies, the links are in your press kit, established that the falling top section of the building did not deliver an impact to the lower section of the building that could have crushed the core structure and caused it to fail. In order to deliver an impact, the falling section would have to give up some of its momentum and hence slow down. This did not happen. There are good reasons to believe the falling section could not have destroyed the building. However, what both of these papers establish is the observational fact that they did not destroy the building. It would have taken explosives to cause the destruction we saw. Number two. The fall of Building 7 was even more anomalous. It underwent a sudden transition from complete support to complete freefall and continued in freefall for over two seconds while it fell 100 feet. That's eight stories of support that were completely eliminated. An object in freefall can do no work on other things along the way. Something had to clear the path to allow the upper section of the building to fall unimpeded. Something had to remove all support for eight stories across the entire width of the building, which, by the way, was the size of a football field. Simultaneously, to within a fraction of a second, in order for the building to fall straight down as it did. At first, NIST tried to cover up the, flat, the fact of freefall, claiming it fell 40% slower than freefall. When I and others challenged them on their denial of freefall, they actually changed the report. The final report acknowledges freefall, but claims it is consistent with their prior analysis. This is physically impossible. NIST transformed a blatant lie into an incoherent and still false bare assertion. The NIST scenario, this number three, the NIST scenario for the destruction of the Twin Towers was based on supposed high temperatures from fire. The question of high temperatures in the towers has an interesting twist. On the one hand, the highest possible temperatures due to kerosene fuel and office fires missed the melting point of steel by a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. The evidence shows the, fill, the fires burned a lot cooler than that. So NIST and its defenders came up with scenarios whereby steel merely weakened by office fires could fail and trigger a global collapse. However, on the other side of the coin, there is evidence for temperatures in the towers much higher than the melting point of steel. There are mountains of eyewitness testimony to molten steel in the rubble pile. The rubble continued to burn at high temperatures for literally months, despite huge amounts of water. They say they described it as a lake. There are massive beams twisted like pretzels without ripping or buckling. This can only be accomplished at very high temperatures. There are objects that have been dubbed meteorites, composites of molten concrete and steel. Most telling are the billions of iron microspheres scattered throughout the dust that covered New York. These testify to temperatures that could melt iron in conditions that could spray it into a mist whose droplets condensed before hitting the ground. 
There is no mechanism for these to be created during office fires. The last piece of evidence I want to mention is one that should have clinched the case over a year ago. The identification of unreacted nanothermite in the dust. Points one, two, and three are each in themselves smoking guns. This is the loaded gun. How many murder suspects have been convicted due to powder burns on their hands? This is a high-tech military-grade material that can be tailored into an incendiary that burns fast and hot or an explosive. It not only points to buildings rigged in advance by insiders, but like the genetics of the weaponized anthrax attacks, it points directly to involvement by high-level insiders with connections in the military-industrial complex. Leading figures in uncovering all four of these lines of evidence are members of the newly formed Scientists for 9-11 Truth. We are here not just to lend credibility to the movement that demands the truth about 9-11, but to actively uncover that truth piece by piece. Science is about truth. But science in this country also has a history of selling its soul for the government and corporate financing. I highly recommend, I urge those of you in the press to listen to scientists who haven't sold out. Get to know scientists for 9-11 truth. I want to make an additional comment here. I had to get up very early by my standards and drive about three hours to get here this morning. Driving down here, I put an album in my DVD in the car, which comes from my generation. It's the Broadway musical Hair. And as I was approaching LA Civic Center, I got to the, the finale, the last song. And the words just so hit me that I, I sat in the parking lot and I transcribed them before coming up here. And given that we're doing this in conjunction with artists and actors for 9-11 Truth, I thought a little solidarity would be appropriate. Let me read to you some of the lyrics. I won't try to sing them. We stop, look at one another, short of breath, proudly walking in our winter coats, wearing smells from laboratories, facing a dying nation, a moving paper fantasy, listening for the new told lies. And it goes on to the finale, let the sun shine in. And that's what we need here today. We need to, the truth, we need to let the sun shine in. Thank you.